Today we're going to do everything from mixing paint into bottles to gel printing. Okay, so I'm so excited. I have new stencils. I have three stencils and one set of masks and I'm happy with all of them. So in today's session, you're going to see me use my new stencils and I have a little bit of a sale going on this month of July. So I'm calling it Christmas in July and I'm putting all stencils, all 16 of the stencil and mask sets on sale for $15 a piece. Or I think it comes out to $14.99, something like that. I recently posted a video about Nova paints and I had these bottles that I also bought in that same order. And so we are going to mix up some colors. So the first thing I suggest if you do get Nova paints is put them in bottles. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, before I get started on my new, you know, my session with my new stencils, um, I recently purchased Nova Paints and I you know, realized that working with them right out of the jar was, was just not going to work for me. First of all, this blue color is a little, um, it's a little dark. So I wanted to like mix it up a little bit. I wanted to add a little bit of yellow to it and, uh, and a little bit of white. And so that's like one of one of the jars. And then, of course, even the white and the black, which I'm going to leave alone, they need to be in a jar because it's a lot easier to get the paint, to transfer the paint onto the plate when it's in a squeeze bottle. So um, I really love, you know, the fluid paints, but they've got to be the, they've got to be in a, in, a, in a bottle. So I did buy the bottles. I'm going to have to buy some more. And um, actually yesterday, after sh I shot this, I bought at Michael's these little tiny, like more like the size of the Craft Smart jars. And I am definitely, you know, for smaller mixtures where I don't need this whole big giant bottle, um, I'm definitely going to utilize those like for, for unique colors. So I'm really looking forward to playing with that. So I discovered all I really need to do, this paint is fluid enough that I just need to get it in the bottle and then shake it up really good. And even if it isn't completely mixed, it will, it will totally like blend on the plate anyway. So I am on this yellow bottle. I'm going to pour almost the entire bottle of yellow into this bottle and I'm going to mix a little bit of white with it. And the reason for that is I just found this yellow to be just a little too bright. Um, I just, so I'm going to use most of this little bottle um, along with the white, get that mixed up. And then I'm going to reuse that yellow jar. I'm going to add a little bit of quinacridone red a little bit later, but um, you know, I was using the bottom of an old brush to mix these up. It's really not necessary. All you need to do is get the paints in there and shake them up. So on the plate, I always like Hansa Yellow and Quinacridone Red uh, mixed together on the plate, and it makes this beautiful orange color. So I thought, let me just mix up this beautiful orange color. And uh, so I'm going to just add a little bit of this quinacridone red to this yellow jar and just mix that up a little bit and I'll just have a little bit of that in this jar so obviously these jars are they're great for storing paint because they sell these you know the paints in these jars so when they're empty I don't see why we can't uh, reutilize them you know in this case, I didn't need to clean it because I was using the leftover yellow paint that was in the jar, but I'm going to actually save them as they empty. I'll clean them out and use them for mixtures. I like the smaller bottles better because the bottles go straight up to the top. The bigger ones have that little lip, so it's not that easy to pour. Like that yellow was so easy to pour into the um, bottle. That was that was really nice. 
So it's a bit tedious having to, you know, spoon it out. <laughs> but I really want to have the black and the white in a bottle. I, di I didn't have the patience to fill it all the way up to the top. And maybe there's some kind of easier way. I don't know. If you know of an easier way, bigger spoon maybe, um, please let me know. So there's no mixture going on here, just going to pour the black and the white. So the quinacridone red I also like, um, you know, as is. So I'm also going to take most of that paint and put it into a bottle. I'm just leaving a little bit in the jar in case I want to mix something else up. I definitely need to get bigger bottles of quinacridone red and I'm going to buy a different color yellow. Um, I have to look and see what choices they have, but I will definitely, uh, this, this Hansi yellow is just too bright. It's different than what they had over at um, in Golden. So you have to like uh, squeeze, a, I mean, snip a little bit of the top off. And I decide to add a little bit more yellow to that mixture because I wanted it to be a little bit more orangey. And now I'm filling up the white bottle. So I had this idea that the red iron oxide, when mixed with the white, would almost make like a Titan buff. It doesn't quite. It's a little too pink. It's a little too red. Um, I will figure it out. I have to play with, with some mixture to get more of that Titan buff color. And... Um, but anyway, that's what this mixture is. And I also do a, a plain white bottle. But it is a little, you know, like a pinky beige, beige color. But I, the, there's something about the Titan Buff color. It's, it's a, it has a little bit more yellow in it, I think. But I need a different yellow um, than what I have. So... I'm going to wait until I get a little bit more uh, Nova paints before I try to mix that up. And the first time around it was a little too light, so I'm just adding a little bit more to get closer to the color that I want. But after using it in my printing session, I realized, no, this is not the right color mixture. So we will figure that out and I'll, um, I'll make a video about that, you know, mixing our own Titan Buff or something similar. Okay, so I'm definitely, I'm grabbing a Sharpie and I'm writing down my mixtures because if I fall in love with a color, I want to make sure I remember how I made it. Um, now this is pretty simple, it's just Hansa and white, but um, I want to get into that, you know, that practice and that because I, ha in the past, I have made bottles and I had no idea how I did it, what colors I used. We all think we're going to remember, but we don't. So this is Thalo tur Turquoise plus white and a touch of Hansi Yellow. And I'll probably lighten that up and add a little bit more white to it. But this is just plain Quinacridone red and black which after a while I won't even be able to read that. Okay, so now I just have to get my desk ready for some jelly printing because I can't wait to use my new stencils. Okay, I was so excited I forgot to turn the camera on. <laughs> so 
So I used my first stencil and with just some black paint. And um, this one's called stained glass. And I just wanted to, I picked up with a deli sheet and I left myself a nice dark ghost. So one of the things I like about the Nofa paint, it is, does leave a nice dark ghost. Um, this other one, I can't remember what I called it. I'll put it all in the description below. I have these two masks. So I have three stencils and two masks as part of my new, um, new set that I'm releasing this month. And like I said, we're going to be calling it Christmas in July and all stencils and masks in my shop are going to be $15 till the end of the month, till the end of July. And, um, okay, so now I'm going to get started. The, the black dried, my ghost dried pretty quick. And I'm going to, I have my turquoise mixture and my Hansa yellow mixture. And I'm just going to blend them a little bit, get a little bit of a green going on. Do a little ombre. It's now I'm using my other stencil. I'm going to pick up with some deli paper. So my technique is always... Let's do deli paper. So this is my previous deli paper, and I'm going to overlay my deli papers this, in this session. This was my, my idea to do this session. I have more complex deli sheets. So what I like about this technique is it leaves me with nice ghosts, but it also, like, look at how that color picked up some of the black from the plate. That's another thing that I really love. And I'm just doing a second pickup just to get a cleaner. Um, but it was so, that paint dries so fast. Um, and I like that. So yes, I'm aware that you can add extenders to it to, um, you know, retarders and what whatnot to slow down the, the dry time. No, I like it drying fast. So, you know, some people have recommended that to me uh, on my video about the Nova paints, but no, I like that it dries this fast. It's even faster than golden. Keeps you moving. So this is that color. As you can see, it is a little bit more salmon-y color, like a, a little too pink for me. But, and dark. I think I added too much red iron oxide. I think if I had left it a little whiter, it would have been better. So this is the deli sheet. And that's what I'm talking about. It picked up that black that was on the plate along with the color. It just makes a really interesting pattern. So this is why I like to do multiple layers where you dry in between, even though putting down the st the second stencil is going to destroy the first st stencil but in a way it's destroying the first stencil but I think it's making the print more interesting so I am waiting about a minute and a half to make sure this is completely dry and that I get all of the paint up off the plate so I figured out with this rice paper anyway um, it takes about a minute and a half with a nice fast drying paint. Two minutes, two and a half minutes for a slower drying paint like an, like an Amsterdam. Okay, so let's see. So see how like the first pickup kind of left us with a little grunge in those openings where the um, where the beige color is or the light color in the background. And it did dull my colors a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to start again with black. You know, I cleaned my plate a little bit before starting this session because I wanted, like, you know... Anyway, so I'm getting a little bit of lacing, but I think that's okay. So these are the, the two masks, 
and obviously you could use just one but I wanted to I wanted to see what they would look like side by side they're nice big masks so you could use them on a larger plate so see how I got the lacing especially for a deli paper that's not bad now look at that nice dark ghost I mean with golden I the stencil picks up a lot of the paint and I'm left with a very pale ghost sometimes so I'm very happy because through this whole session I noticed the ghosts were pretty dark okay so we do have to wait for this to dry let me tell you it takes 30 seconds for this to dry but um, depending on how thick you put the paint on I will say that so if you are new to jelly printing definitely make sure that you're you're brayering a thin coat you do not need a thick coat your prints will come out better if you do a thin coat I trust me okay so now we're going to try that mixture and this is why you know I think it needed a little bit of a touch of white just to lighten it up a little bit but we have, it's not as orange as I thought it was going to be, but it is definitely different than quinacridone red, which was the, you know, mixture, quinacridone red and Hansa yellow. And I am, I put too much, so I am brayering some off. See how nice and thin I am making that? Super thin. Now we're going to try this other stencil. And I'm going to pick up with Deli. And I wasn't sure how this one was going to come out because this is going to be a big ghost with a lot of um, a lot of background. So I was afraid I was going to ruin it. I love the deli paper. I think it's it's going to be fun to use. And I I did pick up a lot of paint, but love how I now have these little dots through the through the mask where the mask was. So this was a lot of fun. I really loved. Wished the colors were brighter. <laughs> I'm always looking for bright colors, but I I loved the effect that these, you know, masks and stencil had together. So now I'm going to pick this up with the Hansa, Hansa yellow, but I'm going to add a little bit more white, which I end up doing every single time. So I think, yeah, I need to add more white to that bottle. But I also like when you add white on the plate and it doesn't necessarily mix completely, like there's little blobs in the middle. I like that. So, you know, it's, I like mixing on the plate for that reason and not mixing too perfectly. And again, about a minute and a half. And I'm just feeling for coolness. I could pretty much tell as soon as the paint dries, time to time to pull. Okay, so here goes. Love the way this paint pulls off the plate. Look at how beautiful that is. I am so excited about this particular combination of, of masks. I have other masks that I could try with that stencil as well. Really, really pleased with that. Okay, so now we're going to start with the um, phthalo turquoise mixture that I made. Still have a little bit of yellow on my brayer, so that's mixing in with the two. That looks nice. Thin coat. Again, I'm trying to create a ghost. I 
and of course we need to wait for that to dry. And I'm going to use probably this like limey green that I had mixed up a few, I don't know, weeks ago, months ago. And that is that, that's not Nova paint, that's probably a golden paint. So I'm thinking I'm going to use the, that green and the quinacridone red. Not mixed together, but side by side, blend it a little bit. I'm adding a little white. So part of the reason why I wanted to start, you know, playing with the Nova paints is because it would, you know, maybe get me working with some slightly different colors, even if they're sort of in the same family, you know. Um, but this turquoise color, this thalo turquoise is different than the teal that I've been using, but yet it's still in the same family. And, you know, I just, I just want to play with some different colors a little bit. And I guess even the quinacridone red is, looks more like the, almost like the magenta. It's, it's a brighter uh, magenta, uh, quinacridone red. So this deli sheet, I absolutely love, absolutely love this one. So I don't know why I haven't layered the deli sheets before, but I mean, I've done it occasionally, but not that often. So in this session, I decided I was going to do a lot more of that. And I'm waiting for this paint, this new layer to dry. And I just keep looking at it from underneath because it just is amazing me how beautiful it is. And I'm trying to think how, you know, what color am I going to use to pick this up? And you can't really judge it from what you're seeing on top, obviously. And this is almost real time. It's, it's sped up a little bit, but... Um, so I'm mixing a little bit of that um, sort of orangey quinacridone mixture with that um, neutral color that I mixed up. So it's an even darker salmon. And hopefully a little uneven, kind of like the brayer sheet. Okay, so after about a minute and a half, I'm going to pull now. And as you can see, I am getting clean pulls. I'm just losing a tiny little bit around the edge, and that's it. Even my corners are coming up. And this one is, I love this one. It is just, it's beautiful. But of course, I also love the deli paper. So I like how you get, you know, you get a little bit of both this way. You know, you're like tag teaming your papers. And, you know, one, the, the deli paper allows us to get um, that second sheet. And if I used rice paper to pick up that first sheet, it would not have picked up quite as well and it would have left me a lot more grunge. So that's why I use deli paper to pick up the first time through the stencil. And then the second pull is with the rice paper. And in this case, because I'm using two stencils on every single one, we're, do, we're, we're overlaying our uh, deli papers. And you can never get enough black deli paper, <laughs> in my opinion. It adds nice contrast when you're making your collage. Again, we have a great ghost that we're going to let dry. And then we're going to pair it up, trying to decide which one do I want to pair it up with.
So I was really pleased with the way these stencils came out and using them got me really excited. And so I, in this case, because my next layer is not gonna be black and I cannot seem to get my brayer to stop showing some black and I don't want the black to mix in with my color, I'm using a baby wipe to clean my brayer off a little bit. And then rolling it on the paper and, I, and then I noticed that I had some gunk on one end, so I switched to another brayer. So keep that in mind, when you're using black, especially the carbon black, it reactivates if it's on your brayer. Okay, so now I'm mixing some quinacridone red with a touch of yellow, um, white, and we're gonna use on the left-hand side, the Hansi yellow. Oh, nope, green. and a bit of yellow. Let me get that beautiful color in between, but I think this, these three colors together really look beautiful. Look at that sheet. Okay, back to our deli paper. And the deli paper, you do, you do not have to wait a minute and a half. Look at how fast I did this and I love this sheet. Love how it picked up all that black from the first layer. You can see we're gonna get some interesting results. It's like the subtraction from the second stencil breaks up the black from the first one, from the very first layer. I hope I'm explaining this correctly, that there's like a, a subtract, um, subtraction that is happening when we put the second layer down and we're picking up at the deli. Leave a, leave a question below if I'm not being clear with that. So this is another color that I mixed a couple of months ago. This was like a Payne's gray and white. This gives us this really sort of dusty blue gray color which is a nice background. So if you've only been using paint straight from the bottle, try mixing your colors and making something a little bit more unique. Give it a try. It's not that difficult. Uh, they do, I'm gonna put a link below to a book that has like recipes for mixing colors. I haven't purchased it yet, but I'm gonna get it really soon. Hopefully it will help me mix some uh, Titan Buff, but it's not that expensive. And I think it was, it was recommended by somebody else. I, I cannot remember who, um, or I would give them credit, but I, didn't know a book like that existed. I mean, I just, I kind of wing it when I'm mixing colors. So even though that, that dusty blue kind of toned down some of our colors and made them less bright, I still liked the way that paper came out. Not everything needs to be screaming bright. So now I'm gonna try using the uh, red iron oxide straight out of the bottle. It kind of looks like an azo gold when you spread it out. I just want to experiment with it. Let's see what, see how that color what that color is. It was probably too transparent to use as my um, f first layer, but I wanted to give it a try. Okay, so now we have to put a second layer on this once this dries. 
So this was challenging trying to figure out what colors would, you know, look good with this. So I decided to use my, my little brayer sheet over here to squirt some other colors down to see, you know, maybe what would look good with this. So this isn't a color combination I would normally gravitate to, but I thought, why not? Um, this is also a paint that I uh, mixed up a couple of months ago. It's um, Golden's Teal with a little bit more white. And I wanted to try this particular stencil again. I think I'm calling this one Cobblestone. I love how it went sort of like in a circular pattern. Reminds me like of old streets. I'm from Philadelphia, so it, there were some old streets in the old part of town where Independence Hall is that had like cobblestone. So that's kind of what it reminds me of. Also in New York City, parts of Greenwich Village had still had cobblestone streets, at least when I was living there. So we didn't get a clean pull on this. I don't know why, but I decided that I wasn't unhappy about it because it still left an interesting pattern. And now I want to at least test how these paints do when brayered through the stencil. This is not something that I usually like because the edges are really just not sharp enough for me. Maybe, maybe if my stencils were a little thinner and we picked up a lot, we left a lot, we got like a really grungy pull from the stencil, but that might give us also a really good result. So now I'm trying to think, oh my God, what am I gonna pick this up with? Um, but this is, gonna, this is taking a little bit longer to dry, so it's, um, I'm thinking about it. I'm having a hard time thinking of what I'm going to pick this up with. This was a hard one, but luckily the paint was taking a long time to dry, so it was giving me time to think. And I love that color combination over on the brayer sheet. I mean, all those colors look beautiful, even where there was transparency. So I don't know, we'll see. And the winner is yellow. <laughs> I thought maybe there was a little too much dullness going on. Maybe I needed to really brighten it up in the background. Um, and that yellow color isn't going to dull down the quinacridone red, but I'm sure something else dulled it down, like maybe the teal blue. I don't know how much of the quinacridone red we're going to see, but let's let's do this poll and let's check it out. So I have to say, on in this particular set of stencils I'm absolutely in love with. I don't always love my stencils. You could probably tell which ones I really, really love because I use them all the time, but this particular set I think I'm going to use a lot and I'm going to continue to love it for quite a while. Um, I only used the masks once in this session, so I've definitely got to use them again soon. Anyway, this turned out very interesting. The Teal blue was not quite as bright, probably because I put the uh, quinacridone red on top of it, but it's still, you know, it made a nice blue. And the yellow, that little, that pop of yellow really is fantastic. Okay, so let's recap. So this was the first deli sheet that I ended up overlaying, and I absolutely love it. And this was our final print. That was the result of those two deli papers, uh, or two overlaid deli paper. Uh, on this one from the masks, I did not overlay it, but I loved the lacing that was going on, so I decided to keep it. And that deli sheet, which was part two of that video, of that print, um, can also be overlaid on that. And then we got this fabulous print that I'm very, very happy with. And this one too, this is the colors here, are, they're different for me, so I'm, I'm in love with that. And then this was, of course, the deli sheet that, that made that um, previous print. And again, I, I love the transparency here, so I'm going to see. I'll have to use that on a simpler background. And we've got to have sometimes, you know, our black deli sheets. 
And that one's also really cool. Kind of reminds me of little candies or something. I don't know. I love it. And I think that led to this one, which is also slightly different for me color-wise. Beautiful. And this was the red iron oxide. A little out of my comfort zone here. But then we paired it with the teal color. And that made an interesting deli paper. I didn't want to overlay those for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. But this was our final print. And I, I love the way it came out. I didn't think I was going to like it. As I was like working on it and started with the red iron oxide, I was like, oh, that was a mistake. I didn't think I was going to like it, but did. Absolutely loved it in the end. So thank you for watching and don't forget to create, inspire and share. And really, if you were going to ever buy one of my stencils or mask sets, now's the time to get them. The sale ends July 31st. See you next time. Take care. Bye bye.